Matthew 6 and 9. And after this manner pray ye our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. All right, so the laws that are in the Bible that Christianity says is done away with are the laws of heaven. And the laws of heaven will be done in earth in the Lord's kingdom. So I don't know where they're getting this madness from. But first and foremost, I'm going to give all praises, all honor and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakai Kodash. Double honors unto the apostles, double honors unto the elder bishops. Salutations to all our fellow laborers doing this work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and their freedom now more so than ever. To the scattered elect that are scattered around the four corners of the earth. That be like unto the speckled bird, the Israelite foreigners that look like the heathens. And to the Aquas that are listening and learning to you, I say Shalom. This is your brother Malcolm from the branch of the Great Millstone coming at you with another lesson. And uh, I was listening to a video that my beloved brother, Elder Yashawamba, put up um, about three days ago. And, you know... And it was about salvation and, and the kingdom of heaven is the salvation of the Israelites and no other people. It's the kingdom of the Lord's, which he is going to hand over to the house of David, which are the elect. You know, and it's like he said, you know, you, you Christians are through Christianism, you know, colonial slave Christianity, plantation Christianity is done. It's over. Because you people watch our videos and then you listen and then you come back with arguments that don't match up with scriptures. And all of a sudden you got nobody was going into the history. No one was going into prophecy. You know, no one was going into the book of Obadiah, the book of Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel. You know, no one was doing that. And Daniel, it tells you in Daniel, it tells you he saw the thrones, you know, when the Lord came back. Let me see if I can find that real quick. Um. The books were open. Hold on, hold on. Because I'm kind of going in a whole different, the spirit took me in a different route. I had a bunch of scriptures and a video I was going to play. This is a the vid, uh, this is a video that was put up by the, the brother Bakwa Amath. And it's called, This is for All You Emotional Israelites. And he goes into the law um, of, of, you know, of virginity and, and then how, and rape. And there's a whole law on how, on, on rape, on how to deal with it. All right. Those are the laws of heaven. Men are allowed to have multiple wives. Men will only marry virgins, right? Unless a woman husband dies. And in the kingdom of heaven, unless it's a heathen woman, Israelite women aren't going to be dying like that. Our women are going to be perfect. All right? But uh, let me go to what I was looking for and try to get back on track. I think it was Daniel 7 and 9, if I'm not... Yes, this is Daniel 7 and 9. It says, and I beheld till the thrones were cast down. So that's all the governments of the earth, all the power structures. Because what do you think is going to happen? You know, all you Christians, when a, all these kingdoms were placed here upon earth and the earth abide forever, but the kingdom of heaven is going to be floating around in the clouds somewhere. The scriptures clearly say the earth abides forever. And that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men. All right. He ruleth in the kingdom of man and set up up over who he chooses. And he's going to set up the Israelite men, except they're going to be more than men. We're going to be immortals. That being the difference. And, the, and, and with the everlasting kingdom. That's not going to be floating around in the clouds. It's going to be here on earth. Why else would it talk about heaven that the animals, that the children will play with the animals, with, 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 uh, with poison asp and with, and with lions and things like that? Where the you know why why are the the uh, the animals gonna the 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 beasts gonna go back to, to eating straw and grass and not each other and the you know the carnivores, you you your 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 philosophies and your doctrines makes absolutely 
no sense. All right. But it says, but behold, I, I be uh, I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the ancient of days did sit whose garment was white as snow. And the hair of his head was like the pure wool, meaning that, and his throne was like the fiery flame and his wills um, as a burning fire. So he had woolly hair, big afro, a woolly white afro. All right. And um, he's coming to conquer and destroy. And anyone wants to dispute that, you go to 10 and, and 10 and 5. And it tells you that uh, uh, Daniel 10 and 5. Then I lifted up my, my eyes and looked and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with the fine gold of Euphaz. His body was like the barrel you know, on a green garment and his face was his appearance of lightning. His eyes were like lamps of fire and his feet like in color to polished brass his oh his arms and his feet so that's copper color like a dark penny like an old penny really dark woolly hair and dark skin stop playing all right but yeah once again the name of this video is this is for all you Israelites, all you emotional Israelites. And I'm going to start at about the seven minute mark and let it play until about the, uh, the 16 minute mark. All right. So without any further ado, let me check the sound. Yep, we're good. And he in the ways and see and ask for what? The old paths. So... Let's keep going. It says that men may find thy path and that they which will live in the latter days may live. So now that we are waking up and we are remembering who we are, how is that? Well, it starts with the book. And then the Lord gives us the understanding to decipher the book as he gave to our elders and their elders. See? So... Back in Jeremiah 6 and 16, thus saith the Lord, stand ye in the ways and see and ask for the old paths, not the new paths, not the Western way, not the Americanized way, but the way of the scriptures. Romans 15 and 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. It says, where the good way, or where is the good way? So the old paths are the good way. That's right. And walk therein. So you're supposed to apply these scriptures where they fit. And I say that because when you go into the, um, Paul mentioned, all things are lawful for me, but not all things are expedient. And a lot of Israelites don't understand what that means. Meaning just because something is lawful or that it was done, and you may have knowledge of that doesn't mean that you have to do it today because certain things we cannot do today. I'll give you a perfect example. Leviticus 20 and 13. All right. Um, someone living that sort of lifestyle can't be put to death by us in this society. We have to endure it, even though, according to the laws of heaven, it's lawful. And once the Lord come back, which is soon, the um, that law will be in place and it will be enforced throughout the earth. All right. Because all the other nations aren't going to have the benefit of having the law written into their inward parts so that they don't sin and go off. That's where the judges, that's where your 144,000 come into place. They will be the immortal judges that will show up to all the other nations, all the heathen, every time that they go off and break one of the Lord's laws, will show up there to judge them. This isn't our society for us to implement our laws on a, on a, on a, you know, on a mandatory scale. So we keep the ones we can to the best of our ability. Real quick, Job 8 and 8. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age, and prepare thyself to search of their fathers. So we search out the way of our fathers, which are perfect, just like he just read. All right. So all things are lawful, but not all things are expedient. You can't, you can't do it just because, according to the law, it says that we should. You you would be bringing you would be bringing damnation upon yourself because you wouldn't be using wisdom. So um, it says that ye and says and ye shall find rest for your souls. But they said we will not walk therein, and that's that's Jake, and that's why they're gonna be destroyed.
Okay. So uh, the next precept is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 32, verse 7. It says, remember the days of old. So you see, it keeps telling us to go back, to go back, to go back, because we strayed away from the path. So we need to go back to the path. And this is our compass. This, the book is our GPS. It's our compass. It's our, our map. It says, consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will show thee thy elders, and they will tell thee. And, you know, when you read the scriptures, you'll see, and you look at what's going on in the world today, it's the same people, but you can see how they've drifted so far off from our heritage, from, from how we are actually, or how we've been commanded to live. And so you can understand why the Most High is going to bring that reset through the destruction. So it says, Weddings and Marriage Traditions in Ancient Israel by Tracy M. Lem uh, Lemos. Or Lemos. Uh, marriage in ancient Israel was, a, was very different from marriage today. Although there is a great deal, we do not know about Israelite marriage. The biblical texts that speak about it tell us that many Israelite marriage customs were unlike those of modern Western society or societies. Mm -hmm. So he's already letting you know off the bat what you're about to hear is very different from what you see today. Okay? What, what you read about in the Bible is very different than what you see today. But then you may turn around and say, wait, hold on. I thought this place was a God-fearing country. I thought they swear on the Bible. And then they twist and everything. And change everything. A man is allowed to have multiple wives. In this society, you can't do that for the most part. They or the system is not set up to support that. But they're supposed to be a God fearing country. So why why is it so different now? Because the devil is in power. First, although girls were expected, it says first, although girls were expected to be virgins when they got married. And according to Deuteronomy 22 and 21, could even be put to death if they were found not to be. Men were allowed to marry multiple women. Okay. So meaning that a, a woman couldn't, couldn't, you know, marry multiple men. So if she, she, she had to be a virgin, right? If she was a virgin, that means she was untouched. But on the flip side, a man could have dealt with a, a, a woman and might currently still be dealing with her, but then he could also get another woman. That is a, a multiple women, right? Multiple wives. Hey, <laughs> I'm reading it from here. So he ain't making it up. Now let's go to the precept that he mentioned, Deuteronomy 22. Deuteronomy 22. See, that's the thing. Some of these scholars or some of these, yeah, some of these Edomite scholars, they'll, they'll tell you as it is, as it's written in there, OK, because they know, well, at the end of the day, even if I don't like it, well, this is how it was. But Jake, Lord have mercy. You, you, you mentioned one that they already got the pitchforks, the fires, the rope. They're ready to tie you and behead you and, you know, defame you and all of these things. And you're like, man, I'm just, yeah, call I'm you just reading file. what I'm reading in the book. <laughs> all sorts of lies. <laughs> the same book you claim to read. And, and all we did with the Great Millstone was point out these laws in this particular uh, 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 subject matter and damn they got crucified for it never said that we were doing it or that we condone doing it right now but said uh, all we said was that this is what was happened in the bible and this is what will happen again when the lord reestablishes his kingdom that's it nothing but lies slander came after that mostly from israelites love and uh, yeah hypocrites Deuteronomy 22 and 21, it says, then, let's see. <laughs> All right. All right, let's start actually, let's just hit the point. Deuteronomy 22 and 20. But if this thing be true, oh, all right, let me actually go up a bit just to get some context. Nope, let's go up higher. Uh, okay, Deuteronomy 22 and 15. Um, do you know what? 22 and 16. It says, and the damsel's father shall say unto the elders, I gave my daughter unto this, unto this man to wife, and he hateth her. And lo, he hath given occasions of speech against her, 
saying, I have found not thy daughter a maid. Let's look up the word maid. I have found not thy daughter a maid. Well, now, what does he mean by that? So the word here we have is bath wa la yum okay, which virginity. Now, this word here in the English could be translated to virgin, okay, bath, which the word there would be bath wa la, okay, but here it says bath wa, um, bath wa la yum, you know, and sometimes the, um, well, it says it translates to virginity here, okay, but virgin would be bath wa la. So this is a woman that has never had sex before, meaning that she, there, there's the word. All right. So it says mas masculine plural of the same, let's see, ba, ba, this is a ba, this is a tha, this is a wa, this is a la, and this is a ha. But these are joined, and these are joined. So you have ba, wa, la. Okay, and it says here virgin. So you have virgin, and then you have virginity. Which says which that would be bath uh, bathwalayim, as it says there bathwalayim, so virginity. It says um, virginity by implication and concreteness, the tokens of it made virginity. So um, let's read and let's make sense of what we're reading. So it says here, and lo, he hath given. So the, the father says, I gave my daughter. To this man, to wife, and I know I gave, I gave uh, uh, him. Uh, she was a virgin, as far as the father's knowledge. So, and that's why the scriptures say you gotta walk, keep your daughter in, so she don't, she don't do no nothing. So that that way, you thinking she's a virgin and she's not, and you know you you're trying to marry her off to somebody, and he's expecting a virgin, but then you know. So verse seventeen it says. Uh, and lo, he hath given occasions of speech against her, meaning that you you going he's going to be able to say, well, she's a you know she's she's a, a, a undisciplined. Her parents didn't set her right because she's not a virgin. That means that she was she was out here, you know, doing things. She was being a, a thought they call it these hoes out there. And guess what? That would cause her to get put to death. Cause that's that's she committed adultery. She was betrothed, and she married another man. So, and there you go. See, and in this society, a woman is rewarded for that sort of behavior. She's rewarded, called a bad bitch. Progressive, and everything that's progressive is progressive against the Lord. So, you so-called Christians, and you heathen, you don't believe in the Lord. You really don't. Um, I'm going to finish up with this. This is uh, John 7 and 38. And it reads, He that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. So the truth can sometimes be uncomfortable. But if it's in the Bible, then you just have to, there's nothing you can do about it. All right. So with that, I'm going to give all praises, all honor and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakadash. Wah, a ball, a ball. Kwam, Yasharala, Shalawam.